There are so many atheist conventions every year. Why would you want to travel to Utah for it? Next on the Atheist Viewpoint, a preview of the American Atheist 2014 National Convention on Easter weekend in Salt Lake City. Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman. And I'm Dennis Horvitz. And we're here on our new set. We are. With our new high definition cameras and high definition equipment. Real fancy schmancy. Wow, we're back and we're, uh, we're ready back in the office and we're ready to talk about uh, the next big convention for American Atheists, which is going to be the 2014 National Convention for American Atheists. And as we're taping this, uh, we're taping it in August, okay? Uh, we're taping this in August, and we're taping it for a convention that is not going to happen, Dennis, until April. Right. And so there's a good eight months in front of us. Why are we doing this so early? Well, because we already have a fantastic lineup, a fantastic um, uh, group of people that are coming, and I I'm really excited about it. So I really want to talk a little bit more, a little bit about this coming convention. One of the things that I wanted to uh, talk about about this convention is how different it's going to be from everybody else. Right. Now, there are, like I said in the teaser, there's a whole bunch of atheist conventions out there. Um, it used to be that there was just three or four a year, but now the regionals are popping up everywhere, and there's a whole bunch of conventions. Some of them are more expensive. Some of them are less expensive. A few of them are even free. So why would anybody want to get on a plane and fly to Salt Lake City, Utah, for an American Atheist Convention. And this episode is pro hopefully going to answer that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that we're doing with this convention, like we do with every convention, is we're trying to make it stand out, and we're trying to make it memorable. And the way we make it stand out and the way we make it memorable is to bring in people that are not only the people that we've seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, We've got um, a bunch of standbys that we love. We've got P.Z. Myers coming, Greta Christina's coming, we've got Eddie Tabash coming, uh, we've got um, a wonderful list, you know, J.T. Eberhardt's going to be there, Teresa McBain's going to be there, and those are wonderful speakers and they're going to have wonderful things to say, but um, we wanted to put a bunch of people on this roster that really uh, hadn't been seen before in front of an atheist audience. I we think that we've becoming more diverse as we've been going along in the years, too. Oh, yeah. They are representing, certainly last year was, was evidence of that. Certainly, and, and diversity is a mm -hmm. broad word, not only as far as race and gender, but as far as idea, mm -hmm. and as far as um, diversity of what the speakers actually do. Right. Okay? Uh, there we, We've got to get away from just having bloggers. Right. Uh, so. We moved away, and so what we have for our keynote speaker for, uh, you know, and, and this, this convention is a whole bunch of firsts, mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, you're going to get to the end of this episode, and you're going to say, wow, I have to go to this convention, because after this convention, this is going to be one of those conventions that you remember forever. That's mm -hmm. the plan. That's the plan. Do you remember, Dennis, the Four Horsemen convention? Yes. Were you there? Yes. And do you remember the convention you went to after it? No. Do you remember the convention you went to before it? No. Because the Four Horsemen convention was an awesome convention. That was in 2007. And it was an epic convention with Daniel Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, uh, uh, Sam Harris, and Richard Dawkins, and it was just awesome. Uh, and I want American Atheist conventions to stick out like that. And if I remember, the discussions were very lively. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so much so much for the... Uh, for, uh, 
the idea that atheists just are, are march in lockstep and don't disagree with one another and don't have you know a lot of different ideas. Yeah, and and and, and the, the, that is just getting broader than that. Yeah. So the keynote speaker for the American Atheist National Convention uh, 2014 is the first ever NFL player uh, to attend an atheist convention. Chris Cluey um, is the punter for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, he's also uh, a cheerful agnostic, as mm -hmm. he describes himself. He's an author and an activist, um, and he's he's one of us. He's he's uh, a nice guy. He's written a, a great book called "Beautifully Unique Sparkle Ponies" on myths, morons, free speech, football, and assorted absurdities. And it's a wonderful book about oh, I don't know, being nice to each other and being equal and thinking with your brain. Um, and it, it's just wonderful to have that kind of voice. Finally, in the right. NFL, finally a speaker in the NFL who will come out and say, you know, uh, marriage equality is a good thing. Right. And yeah, I, I, I punted that ball really far and it was perfectly placed. And you know what? No invisible magic man in the sky did that. I did that because I practiced for a hell of a long time. Mm -hmm. And Is it any wonder that fundamentalists now are getting more and more angry and desperate? Oh because, yeah. because atheists from all walks of life are surfacing. Yes. And uh, uh, normalize, normalize, normalize. Right. Right. And that's what you're going to see over and over again. And, and, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm just so thrilled with that. Why don't you talk about Mark? Well, Mark is a, Mark is a founding uh, member of the alternative rock band Spin Doctors. Yeah. And, of course, he's best known for Two Princes and Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. I'm sure we've all seen that video. Um, and the Spin Doctors have sold millions of records. I mean, I got another, we, got, we got another rock star. Right. Another rock star. Right. J.J. Uh, J. French was the first rock star. Now we have another one. And, and I think this, this uh, bodes well for the, for the future because I think uh, as more and more people in, in show business and the arts in general uh, will we'll start feeling comfortable just coming out and saying what they are. Yeah. And uh, hopefully 10, 20 years from now, the most boring thing in the world will be a, an atheist rock star or an atheist actor, or, you know. Well, yeah, 10, 20 years from now, the most boring thing in the world will be an atheist activist because we won't have, you know, 20 years from now, uh, we won't have too much to be active about because but we'll have won by that. That's kind of funny because, in a way, we're working as hard as we can to make ourselves obsolete. That's right. That's, that's what a 501c3 does. That's right. That's what we do. We, you know, we're here for a cause, not for a company. Right. Um, so we've got a professional football player. We've got an NFL football player. We've got a, an, uh, a rock star from the Spin Doctors. We've also got uh, Ms. Denise Stapley. Uh, Denise Stapley is best known as being the winner of Survivor Philippines, where she won a million dollars. And and she was an outed atheist on the show. And she's going to come and she's going to talk about being an outed atheist on the show. Um, she is going to also talk about being a licensed uh, and registered sex therapist, which should bring a little spice to her. Yep. to her talk. but so, so we've got an NFL player, we've got a rock star, we've got a reality star player, a reality star um, winner. Uh, we also have somebody that I'm really looking forward to. Um, Ms. Barbara Hillary has just okay. confirmed. Now, uh, a lot of people are saying, well, who's Barbara Hillary? And why do I care? Why would I travel to Utah to go meet this woman? Well, Barbara Hillary... Um, on April 23rd, 2007, reached the North Pole, and in 2011, at age 79, I'll say this again, at, in 2011, at age 79, became the first African-American woman to reach both poles when she hit the South Pole. Wow. So now this is a young woman of 82, uh, and she can st I mean, you can tell on the phone she can still probably kick my ass, uh, but I'm I would really love to see that. By the way, I would. <laughs> I would that's not love worth to going see to the convention this, for. But but Barbara is just a lovely woman, and she's not an atheist activist. She's an explorer, mm -hmm. and she's the first and oldest black woman, first black woman to reach both poles. I want to hear this woman's story. I want to see this woman's slides, and it's not going to be about atheism. It's going to be about an atheist doing something incredible. Right. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's what, you know, these are going to be memorable, different speeches from people you've not heard before. Right, which I think kind of answers the question that a lot of believers ask, well, if you're an atheist, 
how can you have any purpose in life? And I think I point, we can just point to her. My goodness, I'd love to hear her answer to that. Yeah. I'd love to hear her answer to that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited for, for Barbara. Uh, why don't you read Juan? Juan, uh, Juan Mendez is a member of the uh, Arizona State House of Representatives, mm -hmm. who just made the news recently mm -hmm. in the last several months. Uh, he represents District 26, which includes part of Tempe, Mesa, and the Salt River, uh, Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. Uh, he drew attention, uh, drew the attention of atheists and everybody else uh, uh, throughout Arizona across the, uh, across the United States when he gave a secular invocation on the floor of the Arizona State House. He quoted Carl Sagan and urged his fellow members of the House to, quote, root our policymaking process in the values that are relevant to all Arizonans, regardless of religious belief and non-belief. Damn, such hate. Wow. Such hate. How, wow. how, can, how can anybody object to that? And, uh, and, and <laughs> to, to basically suggest that uh, the uh, House of Representatives uh, uh, of Arizona conduct themselves like grown-ups. Really? Basically. And, you know, the next day, another representative got up and gave an invocation and said that the, uh, the House had to repent for right. hearing such horrible words as, we should care about everybody and we should focus on reality in order to set laws in a secular state. It, it's crazy how much this guy has stuck his neck out. Right. Uh, Mr. Mendez, is, uh, I've had a long conversation with him. He's a really great guy. Uh, he is an outed atheist, an out and proud atheist, um, and an out and proud member, of course, of the Hispanic population. So uh, there's that Hispanic atheist uh, mentality right. that's working there as well. Uh, and he is coming to Salt Lake City to talk about the trials and tribulations of being an outed atheist in uh, a political body and talk about maybe even becoming um, an atheist speaker. Uh, we also have... Uh, other stars, including Matt Delahunty, who will be coming, and oh, yes. Brian Dalton, a friend of mine. Oh, also, uh, two people that I really, really admire. Uh, first of whom is Mariam Namazi. She's mm -hmm. going to be coming. And I really like Mariam. She is the person who organized the worldwide protests uh, a few months back uh, against the treatment of the Bangladeshi bloggers right. who are in jail for blasphemy. Right. Um, so she organized a worldwide protest about that. She is a, a, a fantastic speaker about Islam uh, and about how Islam uh, affects not only Muslims but also non-Muslims on a global level. She's coming. And Faisal Saeed al-Mutar, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, is the Iraqi-born uh, writer now living in the United States. He is also going to be coming. He's going to be talking about uh, a different uh, the different face of Islam um, and the dangers of unsubstantiated belief and how, of course, we can all live a better life without them. Uh, so we've got a roster here. Uh, I mean, yes, we've got um, and more, okay, mm -hmm. and more, you know. Um, we're also going to have uh, the third annual costume dinner, uh, which is going to be fantastic. The Meet the Stars dinner, where we're going to have a charity auction. And the charity auction is going to include really great items that we're working on right now. Uh, we sold a lot of things last year. I'm going to give you a hint. We've got a couple rock stars that really like us right now, J.J. French and, and, um, and Mark White, uh, really like us right now. They play guitars, so, uh, or I should say one guitar and one bass. Uh, but Sorry, uh, I, I have to say that. Oh, and uh, Marsha is coming. We should mention Marsha. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes, Marsha is actually, Marsha, uh, Marsha Botzer has, uh, is a member of the uh, LGBT community. Uh, she has been for more than 30 years, and she is founder of uh, Seattle's Ingersoll Gender, uh, Ingersoll Gender Center. Gender Center. Uh, Marsha has twice served as the co-chair of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and was the national co-chair of the 2008 uh, Obama, Pr uh, Obama Pride campaign and is a faculty member of the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Center's Emerging Leaders Program. Uh, she's won two, uh, she has won numerous awards for her activism and leadership and is a vocal advocate for atheists in the LGBT community. I, I just, I just want to say that um, uh, myself, this, the, the, the diversity of, uh, of the, the movement has 
just exploded over the last, just even three or four years mm -hmm. since I've been a member, mm -hmm. and um, and how uh, the we you know we've reached out to uh, the the Hispanic community, the Black community, the L LGBT community, and they've kind of reached out to us. Yeah, they're, uh, they're reaching back. They're reaching back, they're, they're, which, they're, is, which I think is a, a wonderful thing. And it took a little time, I, I must say. It took a little time for those uh, larger communities to actually uh, embrace us, but they're beginning to do it. We're beginning to see embracing from the black community. We're beginning to see embracing from the LGBTQ community. Um, and uh, Well, well it, I mean, I, it's understandable because when you're, all, when you're oppressed already for being a minority, yeah. to come out as an atheist on top of that uh, is... Uh, takes, sure. It's, a lot of courage, sure. really. And, and on that reign, we're going to have Sikki Vu Hutchins is there there as well, uh, and, and of course she's going to be <laughs> she's she's always got something important to say, something interesting to say. Mm -hmm. um, Barry Lynn uh, is oh, going to yes. be there representing the old white guys, um, <laughs> but Barry Lynn is the executive director of Americans United for the Separation of Church and State. This is the first time that he's going to be speaking with us for a long time or in a long time. Uh, he's certainly what we would call a secular ally. And uh, we are really, really pleased uh, to have Barry with us. So just, just look at this roster. Just let's think about this roster. We've got Barry Lynn. We've got Juan Mendez, Mark White, Marsha Botzer, Sikifu Hutchins, Barbara Hillary, Denise Stapley, and Chris Cluey. And those are the people you've probably not heard. Right. Right? That's right. a lot of people that you've probably not heard. And if you're lucky, you've heard Faisal and Mariam. And if you're not lucky, you haven't. Um, but these are people that we're really excited to bring to the table, in many cases, for the first time for our audience and for the audience, for the, uh, for the actual movement audience. And I'm really excited to be able to bring this to you. And that's why we're announcing this so early, because we want you to know that every year there's a bunch of conventions, but the American Atheist Convention is aimed at standing out. Right. Uh, last Being the year, cutting edge. Yeah. We're, we're, we're on the cutting edge. We're, we're, dish, we're not only saying we're normalizing, but we are showing it. We've got a football player, a reality star, an explorer. Uh, we've got so many people. We've got a rock star. We've got speakers from all different organizations and all different um, niches of the market. Uh, very, very diverse. Very, very important. A whole bunch of people that I'm really excited to see. And can yes. I also, can also, comment, also mention that... Uh, Somebody who, who I've interviewed before and is just a fun person to interview, and that is Greta Christina. Oh, yeah. Um, she is, if, if you don't know about her, she's, uh, uh, she's a very widely read uh, atheist blogger. She is the author of the book, Why Are You Atheists So Angry? 99 Things That Piss Off the Godless. Greta doesn't mince words. No. Greta basically comes out and, sa and says it. Uh, she's a regular atheist correspondent for AlertNet and has been writing about atheism and skepticism uh, on her blog since 2005. She, uh, she, her writings have appeared in uh, multiple magazines and newspapers, uh, including Skeptical Inquirer and Everything You Know About God is Wrong. And um, she blogs about, sexu uh, about sexuality. She blogs about um, being sex positive, LGBT and issues. And you know, one of the things that I want to say about Greta, uh, she is a friend of mine. Right. Uh, and she's also one of the very few people that I will bring to the American Atheist Convention year after year after yes. year. I believe this is her third year speaking. And the reason that she's coming, again, is because she's one of the most hi consistently highly rated speakers we yes. have. She's just a fun person. She's great. She's a fantastic speaker. She's got a lot to say. Also want to shout out to uh, Brian Keith Dalton, Mr. Mm -hmm. Deity, is going to be there. Right. Uh, he is a former Mormon. Uh, we're going to Salt Lake City. Uh, I believe he will have a lot to say. Uh, Matt Dillahunty is also going to be there. I'm sure he will. An an another shy flower. Yes, another another wallflower who will be uh, fading off into the distance. It'll be him and PZ Myers over in the right. corner quivering. And, and, and um, <laughs> uh, Speaking of quivering, Ricky Garrison is going to be there uh, from the Quiverful Movement. Um, uh, also, Teresa McBain, uh, the newly announced director. I'm hoping I'm getting this right, the director of something for the Harvard Humanists. I'm sorry, she just moved. She's the former executive director of the Humanists of Florida, and now she's a director at Harvard Humanists. Uh, Beth Presswood will be there. Uh, Tom Flynn from the Sec Center of Inquiry. And Tracy Lockwood is coming. Mm -hmm. Tracy Lockwood is, has a fantastic story. She was raised um, in a cult. 
and she was raised to look differently and raised to act differently, and she has escaped her cult, and she's going to be talking about what it was like living in there and what we can do to help children being raised in cults. That's going to be a fantastic show. J.T. Eberhard, once again, a repeat of performance, but that's because he's so great. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to having him on. Uh, I am also really looking forward to having just the socialization, you know, just seeing everybody. Last year, the American Atheist National Convention had 940 attendees. That's our largest non-reason rally convention ever. There will be billboards around Salt Lake City. There will be uh, lots of new faces in Salt Lake City. Uh, the Salt Lake City, the Salt Lake Valley atheists are, are, and the Utah atheists are, are forming together and coalescing and becoming uh, hopefully what will be. You know, the, the other secondary picture here for these conventions is not just to have a great time and to make money for American atheists, which obviously that's what they're for, but it's also to leave behind um, a formed organization that can be a force for atheism in Salt Lake City. Right. So right now there's a great organization there uh, that, that, you know, for, for local atheists, but what they really could use is a huge influx of members. Yes. So we're going to put billboards all around the city, as many as we can, as, as, as soon as, assuming we can find a billboard company that'll put up our billboards. Uh, we're going to raise as much awareness as possible and bring in as many former Mormons, AKA atheists, former Mormons to the convention where they can meet people like Brian Dalton, like Matt Dillahunty, like Mariam, like Barbara, like Chris Cluey, like Denise Stapley, and get introduced to the local atheists who are there, join them, and when we leave, the Utah atheists will be larger and stronger and have achieved critical mass, and they can be a long-term player in the political movement of the local uh, the local um, Salt Lake City politics. I, I think it's just amazing that over the last several years, you're seeing activism um, in areas where 10 years ago it would have, I, I wouldn't have believed it. Nobody would have believed right. it. Right. You know, starting with Alabama, of course. Yeah. But uh, Oklahoma now has a, uh, a very large atheist activist community. Yeah. And uh, to, to, to move it to, to Salt Lake City, I mean, who'd have thunk it 10 years ago? Who'd have thunk it? But now we're going, and now we're going to have some fun with it, too, because right. the news is going to be all about it. The people are going to be all about it. I believe we're going to have a fantastic time. The hotel is being very welcoming to us. It's the big Hilton in downtown. Uh, and... Uh, so, so in other words, atheist money is just as good as everybody else's? At the Hilton? Yeah. Not so much at certain other hotels we that... We won't mention their names. That we won't mention their names, but they rhyme with Lariat. Okay. But at any rate... Uh, <laughs> but at any rate... <laughs> you um, kind of roped that in. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, uh, we hope you'll join us for this convention. Um, is there any th final thoughts before we let it go? I, I actually have one, one thought. And yeah. uh, with this series of shows that we are now beginning... Uh, it marks my 10th year of involvement in Atheist Viewpoint. Oh, wow. And I would just like to thank American Atheists and all those who have been watching um, for uh, their support and for watching the show and for my having the opportunity to uh, be a voice. Well, thank you for being a voice. Right. Thank you for being a voice. And a quick shout out to Gordon and, of course, Todd, our, uh, Nash, our uh, office director, uh, who really redid this entire set. All the high quality video, all the high quality audio, the nice background, everything that you're seeing right now is all from our man Todd and Gordon. And thank you both for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank you for joining us on American Atheist view, uh, Viewpoint. I want to hopefully you'll all uh, check out the Viewpoint um, archives, see how we've improved. Also, please go to the website and register for the convention. Early bird prices end at the end of September. Early bird prices end at the end of September, so please book your tickets now. There are still people that we're working on that will make it more attractive, even so, uh, to come. So thank you for uh, considering going to the American Atheist Convention. Please come, and thank you for joining us on The Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. <laughs>
your Bible and read it well. I've heard all the stories the preachers tell. What kind of saints would create a hell? I'm not falling anymore. Can't you get free from the jail inside? You sold your own mind for a place to hide. Break your slave chains and cast them aside. Sold your own mind for a place to hide. 